But welcome to part three of our study of Galatians. Last week, Pastor Jim led us most of the way through chapter two. Uh, we got almost all the way through chapter two, but we are going to uh, study chapter three uh, tonight. And to get us started, I just want to do a quick reset. Remember that Paul's letter to the churches in Galatia is one of the earliest letters of Paul. So this is coming to us about 15 or so years after the death and resurrection of Jesus. The church is a very young, fledgling movement in the Mediterranean world. And the church in Galatia would have been composed of people who were Jews and Gentiles. And probably more than half the church were Gentiles. And if you remember, there's a particular problem that causes Paul to write this letter. And the problem is that certain people, whom we refer to as the Judaizers, they come to the Galatian church and they basically say this, it is great that you have faith in Christ. Now, if you want to remain acceptable to God, you need to live as Jews. You need to follow Jewish ceremonial and ritual laws. Which basically meant for these Gentiles, they needed to do things like, if you were a man, be circumcised. Uh, they needed to follow certain dietary laws and change what they eat. They needed to change the kind of clothes they wear. All of this to adhere with Jewish, Jewish ceremonial and ritual law. So basically, you have this church that's thrown into crisis by this. Because if you're a Gentile believer, remember we talked about this in week one, if you're a Gentile believer, you've already given up a lot to follow Jesus. Because in the ancient world where idolatry was so rampant, you kind of had to give up any kind of profession or skilled labor to be a follower of Jesus. So many of them were now impoverished, maybe experiencing ridicule in the community. They may have been shunned by their families. They already gave up a lot to impose Jewish law on the Gentile believers would have driven many of them away from the church. This was a hardship for them. And so we know that Paul is writing to put down the message of the Judaizers and to remind the, the Galatians of his gospel. And so let's remember quickly uh, the outline of Galatians. So far in chapters 1 and 2, Paul's been giving us a summary of the gospel. The gospel of Jesus is that all of us are broken in our sin, helpless, that we're rescued by Jesus when we place our faith in him. And that it is that faith and faith alone that saves us. And any gospel that adds works, like you've got to do something to earn your salvation, that's a false gospel. And Paul then gives us all this evidence. He says, look, this gospel I'm preaching to you, came to me from God, and he get it from somebody else. And then I went out to the desert for three years. And then I went to the mother church in Jerusalem, and I met with Peter and James, and they validated that what I'm saying is actually from God. So he's been kind of laying out the gospel, and then uh, kind of validating his authority to preach. Now tonight, we're going to move into chapter 3, which is a new section. And what he's going to start to do is he's going to say it's not just the case that the Gentile believers don't have to follow Jewish law. But rather, what he wants to show is how the very nature of the gospel is to draw Jews and Gentiles together in a brand new family under the lordship of Jesus. A new people created in Christ tied together, not by the works of the law, but tied together by their faith. And we're going to start to see this argument unpacked in chapter 3 and 4. And here's what i got to tell you. Chapters 3 and 4 of Galatians are some of the most theologically rich and dense passages in the New Testament. And so we're, on, we're going to have a pretty exciting journey here the next two weeks. So let's jump right in. We'll begin in Galatians chapter 3, and I'm going to read the first five verses. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you 
Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish? After beginning by means of the Spirit, are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? Have you experienced so much in vain, if it really was in vain? So again I ask, does God give you his spirit and work miracles among you by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? So Paul is, first of all, you can hear the emotion in which he writes the letter. He calls the Galatians foolish. This belief that we have to add the works of the law to faith to be saved. This is foolishness, he says. And then he says, who's bewitched you? He's, he's saying, whatever it is that's coming to you, it's like witchcraft. This is not the gospel. And then he appeals to their experience. He says to them, look, do you remember how you came to faith? You heard the gospel. You heard about the crucified Jesus, and in hearing that, you believed. Did you do anything else? Did you go follow some kind of ceremonial law? Did you go off and get circumcised? No, but in believing, you received the Spirit. Now, receiving the Spirit of God is the sign that you are a genuine child of God. In, in Romans chapter 8, Paul refers to the Holy Spirit as the spirit of adoption. Right? The spirit is the sign that I, I'm in the family of God. And so he's saying to them, look, you've experienced something powerful. And do you notice what he references here? He references miracles. So the Galatian church, they put their faith in Christ. They experienced miracles. And he's saying, did you experience those miracles because you were obeying the law? Or did you experience those miracles because you put your faith in Jesus Christ? Well, the answer, of course, is I put my faith in Jesus Christ. Right? None of these Gentile believers had submitted to the Jewish law. They put their faith in Christ and they received the Spirit. Now, if you look at verse 3, it says there in verse 3, after beginning by means of the Spirit, are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? In other words, Paul is saying, your faith journey began with the Spirit of God working in you, and now it's like you're trying to finish your faith journey on your own strength. If God accepted you by grace through faith, then it's not the case that God is going to sustain you by your own effort. But that's something that the Galatians were tempted to do. Now, it's at this point that we can make a, a theological point. And that is that in Paul's theology, and really in the theology of the New Testament, 